Thank you, President Lackman, trustees, faculty, and staff for inviting me here today. I'm very impressed with your convocation. This was my first day of college. My parents drove three hours, and they dropped me at my dorm, helped me move my stuff into my room. Uh, we met my roommate for the first time. I didn't even know his name, anything about him. There was no pre-matching. I think the university put the names in a hat that morning, and hey, let's put these two together. Um, 41 years later, we're still good friends, so maybe there's something to be said for that random matching. Uh, let's see, my parents and I went and got a sandwich, and then they left. And my newfound roommate and I started the feverish and desperate search for beer. So that was convocation in 1975. This is better. You've raised the bar. Champlain College. Thank you for this award, it really means a lot. I'm director of Spectrum. We work with young people and teenagers, many your age, who are homeless, runaways, kids suffering from addiction, kids suffering from mental illness, kids who have dropped out of high school, who don't have job skills, who have spent their entire lives in and out of foster homes. It is not unusual at all to have an 18-year-old show up on our door who's lived in 14 or 15 homes and schools in their short life. Young people, who in the children's mental health system and then they turn 18 and maybe their IQ is a point or two too high or they don't have the right diagnosis and they're on the streets. Young people who have committed crimes and are in the juvenile justice system in inevitably some combination of any or all of those things. I've been at Spectrum for 13 years. I've done this kind of work for 35 years. So you're probably thinking this must be someone who majored in social work, right? Or counseling, or psychology? No! I was a business major. Yeah! Here's how I became a business major. I applied to and got accepted at Villanova and decided to go there, mostly because I got turned down at Yale, Princeton, Brown, Williams, and Hamilton. Uh, and so when I went to send in the letter saying I was going to go there in the first check, I had to fill out a form. You had to pick a major. There were four boxes, engineering, arts and sciences, nursing, and business. So I turned to my dad and said, hey, dad, which box should I check? He said, well, what do you want to do with your life? I said, I'm 17. I have no clue. He, he, he said, well, put down business. Because he was a businessman. He worked in commercial real estate on Wall Street. And uh, so that's what I did, and I was good at it. I finished near the top of my class. I was voted president of the Finance Society. I was inducted into some business honor society. It was Kappa, Kappa Dappa, something. <laughs> and I got this great job. I got a job on Madison Avenue in this multi-billion dollar corporation. And I had an apartment off of Park Avenue. And I had all these suits and ties and a car and I'd go out to the Hamptons on weekends. Everything was going swimmingly well. And then I heard about this shelter for homeless kids in Times Square called Covenant House. And I heard that they needed volunteers. So I thought, I can do that. So every Tuesday night, instead of taking the four, five, or six subway, I took the R subway to Times Square. Now, Times Square, if you go there today, it's all Disney, Hard Rock Cafe. It wasn't like that then. I was with my brother last week. He was like, yeah, in the 80s, you ran through Times Square. It was the center of prostitution, center of the pornography industry, high crime, very violent, and that's where homeless kids were. So that's where Covenant House was. So I go every Tuesday night, handing out snacks, playing basketball with the kids, and a funny thing happened, doing that week after week after month after month. Something, be, something dawned on me, and it was, you know what? This is what I want to be doing with my life. I remember being at a meeting at my multi-billion dollar corporation, and a senior vice president said to us, 
We now are a $30 billion organization, and our goal is to get to $40 billion by the end of the decade, and that's what you all have to work towards. And I remember sitting there thinking, that is not my goal. It's not, it's not a bad goal. I'm not saying it's an evil goal. It can be somebody else's goal, but that is not what my life is about. So I quit. I quit my job. I gave up the Park Avenue apartment, I gave my car to my brother, I gave the suits to Goodwill, and I moved into a hovel of a room in a roach-infested tenement across from a strip club and a crack house in Times Square. My friends thought I flipped my Fuji. My Villanova friends, my Madison Avenue friends thought I had gone insane. To me, it was the sanest thing I had ever done in my life. So I guess my message to you is this. You're all starting out in some major, right? You may continue in that all four years and for the rest of your life. Great. But I'm encouraging you to be open. I'm encouraging you to be open what you're interested in, what you're curious in, maybe even what you're passionate about. I'm encouraging you to be open. That being said, my path of working directly with the homeless, the poor, and the dispossessed is just one path. I think you can make an impact on this world and this planet in every field of study. I really do. All right? So some of you are in the field of education and human studies, right, division? So you're going to be working on education, criminal justice, social work, law. So you're going to be dealing with social justice issues right out of the gate. Others of you are in gaming, right? Game programming, game design is big. At Everybody knows that, right? At Champlain. Okay, so you're going to be dealing with apps. There are apps now which tell you how and where to recycle. There are apps called Seafood Watch, which helps you find ocean-friendly fish at stores and restaurants. <laughs> There's an app called Volunteer Match that show you where volunteer opportunities are. And this was in the New York Times on July 20th. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I have to add this to my speech. Marguerite Dibble, 26, became her firm Game Theory while she was still a student at Champlain College. Its mission is to use gaming to inspire behavior changes, such as teaching teens financial literacy. There you go. Some of you are majoring in filmmaking, right? Think of the films that have changed our consciousness about important social issues. Philadelphia with Tom Hanks completely changed the way we looked at people suffering from HIV and AIDS. The Inconvenient Truth with Al Gore shed a tremendous amount of light on the perils of global warming. Um, the Central Park Five, a great and sad documentary by Ken Burns which showed just how easy it is for low income, especially low income teenagers of color who can't afford lawyers to get absolutely railroaded by the criminal justice system, all right? Spotlight, right, won the Academy Award last year, a very important film about abuse in the Catholic Church. The Hunting Ground, about sexual abuse on college campuses. If you haven't seen The Hunting Ground, you should see it tonight. That's my son, Liam. He's going into eighth grade. He will watch The Hunting Ground sometime within the next four years before he goes to college. The people who made these films have changed our consciousness about important issues in America and in the world. And then there are the business majors. I know you're out there. Yeah! Just like I was. You know what we're doing right now at Spectrum? Okay, we're a nonprofit. You know what we're doing? I have some of the best business minds in Burlington. The founder of Dealer.com, the founder of Union Street Media, somebody from a company called Red Thread, somebody from Select Design. You know what we're doing? We're forming a limited liability corporation, a for-profit entity within Spectrum that's going to hire the young people we work with, all right? The kids we work with are pretty good at finding jobs. They're terrible at keeping jobs. Why? Because they don't know the soft skills of what it's like to talk to a boss, to talk to customers, to call out sick. I was lucky. 
I grew up surrounded by people like that with good work ethic. I learned that from them. They weren't so lucky. Most of the kids we work with, if they even know their parents, frankly, their parents are in jail or they're addicted to drugs and alcohol. So we're going to start. These business people are helping us going to start a business to employ them and teach them hard skills and soft skills. So business majors can do a lot. But well, you don't need to make an impact on this world after you get your degree. You can do it now. We need you. This city needs you. Five blocks from here, right down the hill, is the King Street Center. They work with hundreds of children, low-income children, many of them new Americans, from Somalia, from Bhutan, from Nepal, from the Congo. They need tutors and they need mentors. Boys and Girls Club, the other end of town. Sarah Holbrook Center, same thing. They need mentors. They're working with the same group of children, and those children need help. Spectrum, where I work, I met with my mentoring coordinator the other day. She said, we have 80 mentors matched with kids, but there are so many more kids who need mentors. Can you find me a contact at Champlain College? I was like, yeah, I'm addressing the entire freshman class. <laughs> We need mentors. That's my wife, Mary Beth, right there. 12 years ago, we took in a refugee family, a Somali family, a single mother with five kids, ages one, three, five, seven, nine. Met them at the airport. They lived with us. Mary Beth became mentor to the oldest girl. That nine-year-old girl is 21 now. Three days ago, she was sworn in as a US citizen. She's on a full scholarship at the University of Vermont. <laughs> That's what mentoring can do. This is the other thing we're working on right now. I'm working with four other nonprofit leaders to start what's called a warming shelter. A lot of you are new to Vermont. It's a hot day today. Trust me. We get to the winter, it's, it can be not only freezing cold, deadly cold, literally. Three years ago, two homeless people froze to death out there. Froze to death. That can never happen again. Do you understand me? It can never happen again. After that happened, I just remembered Champlain College that first year let us use one of the buildings and we created the first warming shelter in Burlington where any homeless person could come in during the winter months. We did it again last year. Yeah. So we're looking for a new site now. I'm working with other leaders. We're very close to nailing down a site. And when we do, we're going to put out the call for volunteers, because we cannot do this thing alone. We're going to need your help, OK? We're going to need your help waking people up, feeding people, greeting people. So we need you. This city needs you. Only 6.7%, according to a study by the Asian Development Bank at Harvard University, only 6.7% of the world's population gets to go to college. Think about that. When I was in high school, I thought everybody goes to college. A couple of kids who go, went in the military, but everybody else goes to college, right? No. A very, very thin slice of the world's population gets to go to college. And you're in there. And you're not only in there, you're in a good college. There are mediocre colleges out there. This is not one of them. This is a good college, all right? So I'm saying to you, you've got a great opportunity laid to your feet. It's right there. In my mind, if you're sitting in that audience right now, you won the lottery. You did. You won the lottery of life. I won the lottery of life. I was always a hard work. I had a good work ethic. But really, if I'm really honest, I was born into the right family in the right part of the globe at the right time with the right people helped me along the way. I won the lottery. I won the lottery, you won the lottery, and I'm begging you, please take full advantage of this opportunity that's offered to you, because it's offered to very few in the world. And when I say take advantage, I mean get everything out of these four years that you can and give everything back that you
Thank you, and I look forward to seeing the impact you make on this city and this country and this planet in the coming years. Thank you.